welcome to another episode of Chatty Broads with Becca and Jess. Well, I'm not 100% sure if I watched a mental all or if I was in the middle of a fever dream. Jess, this was... And I really thought about this because, like, I don't want to say something that's, like, untrue. Okay. But tell, tell us your truth because I want you to be authentic This right was now. the worst mental all I've ever watched. In the history of the show. I completely pretty much stopped watching around 55 minutes. If we did not have to recap after Avon's hometown, I would have been out. It, I'm like, I'm done. There's... I mean, I made, I definitely made notes, but no, it was literally after the VIP sneak peek. I was, I was out. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I, 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 but you know what I could have done? What? I could have seen that as a, as a commercial on like Instagram or something. Talk about it on fucking clickbait. Okay. <laughs> Please. <laughs> they did a promo for bachelor happy hour. Talk about it on bachelor happy hour. They, they did. I missed that. They fully did a promo for bachelor happy hour. They said it's their only companion podcast. Whoa. Shane. And I was like, shh. <laughs> Wow, what about talking it out and uh, clickbait? Mm-hmm. I guess maybe it's the only one that's technically a, like a recap oh, podcast. Sh- don't they kind recap of? on clickbait like every week? Oh, I I've like never listened to an episode, but I, I, I and then also on talking it out, they always have uh, is that Brian, Brian and Mike? And Mike's, okay, okay, which I actually really enjoy listening mm. to that. Um, but yeah, I'm like, oh, the, sh- the shade, the only Who companion podcast with Becca now on Happy Michelle. Out. Michelle does. Michelle, yeah. There has been a lot of, there's been a rotating yes. door. I think Michelle, I think it's going to be a, a seems, long time. She seems committed. They've got right? a good vibe together. Cool. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Love both of them. What, did, what, uh, can, can you, can you just tell me what they did for the last 30 minutes? Cause like I, I actually, let me use my notes to remember because I blacked out. <laughs> okay. The last 30 minutes <clears throat> after the BIP trailer, they discussed. The women came on and then the guys were like asking them questions, right? Yes, they interacted a little bit with the ladies and then they did the bloopers and then Billy Eichner and Luke McFarland came on for the upcoming movie Bros and they did a... Why do they do this? I, I'm so confused because first and foremost, don't get me wrong, love. definitely want to... Love. Love, love Billy. Billy Eichner. Love Luke McFarland. I'm very excited to see the movie, bros. Do you know what's the first uh, gay rom com by a major motion pic- or by, really? by a major network? Yeah. So go see it in theaters. It looks amazing. Okay. But, 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 but. Let's see what got on Rotten Tomatoes. Continue. Why in God's name is this, what is this overlap? I, but they always do this. Remember, like, yeah. one that stands out in my mind is um, who's the girl from, from, uh, Jungle, uh, George of the Jungle. What's her name? You know, with curly hair, Ursula. You know that actress? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Remember with like the the wrestler, pro wrestler guy and her, they came on and did one like prom night or something. Right. They came on and prom. I did not have to explain all that, but they always do these stupid, random crossovers. Is this this a money grab or is this like a a, a Warner Brothers situation? Oh, well, yeah, Warner Brothers. Okay. Are these produced by Warner Brothers? Then that probably. I'm assuming. That makes sense. But then they did a preview. They did a preview for... No, Rotten Tomatoes. It's not out yet. yet. Sometimes they do the critic things. They did a preview for Bros. Yeah. And then they had Billy and Luke stay on. And Jesse was like, we're going to play... We're going to play a game, okay? We're going to show you some clips from the season. And you're going to tell us if it's a dating do or a dating don't. And it was just the most, like, forced awkward they showed them a bunch of scenes jesse was not flowing properly it was choppy it was weird and then it rounded out with meatball ripping off his shirt dumping marinara sauce all over himself tackling billy eichner and that's when i was like did i accidentally take some heavy drugs Jess, because i don't feel my like my tv was on playing this and i didn't even i didn't even see it mind you This is the Men Tell All episode where Jesse then says, hey, everybody, just FYI, Gabby, Rachel, they both gave all the remaining men roses. We don't have time to show the rose ceremony tonight, but you can watch it on ABC.com. And I'm like, but, but, but disrespect to the audience. 
disrespect. This is this show has really gone over, gone under. What the fuck was that? I also was feeling like I was feeling bad for the women and the men up there being like, are they so confused with what's happening? Also, oh, the women and the men in the audience, that as well. No, bitch, they got their free cru- fucking virgin cruises. The surprise, I was so jealous. Okay, well, but 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 the surprise that's going to change all of our lives. I was convinced. Was that the surprise? Yes. All of our lives? Well, in the preview, it made it seem like right. Jesse's no, like, I know. Like, that's your like lives game. are going to change looking into the camera with the glass of champagne. And you're like, okay, they're going to announce. Obviously, this sounds very dramatic. They'll announce that maybe there's two, two bachelors. bachelors. That's what I was thinking, too. You know, or, or there's going to be a huge Bachelor in Paradise twist or something that has something to do with the audience at home. But yet, yet. No, now you can. Do, okay, but... Uh, uh, it is really cool that you could shake your phone when you're on the cruise and they bring you champagne. Yes. Did you, I, were you impressed by that? Well, you know that I enjoy some champs. You know I love some champs, but that doesn't affect me sitting at home. It only affects me if I'm on the ship. <laughs> it wasn't even an app that I could use at home. You know so that. what's I, the preview for? I, and Jesse's pulling it out going, all right, everybody, check this out. It was lengthy. It was like two minutes long. When they apparently don't have time to do the rose ceremony to show us an app that we can't even use at home. Only when you're on the boat. Only when you're This on is going to change your lives if you have $3,500 to spend and on then, a six-day cruise. And then check this out. So everyone in the audience gets to go on a cruise. But the funny part is, is that what they didn't include is that it only is until the end of the year. So the people only have five months. Holy shit. To do it. And it only, uh, most of these people are from Los Angeles, sure. right? They only leave out of Miami and like one other place on the East Coast. So they have to pay to then fly to Miami to use the cruise yeah, do you think voucher that, in the next five months. Yeah, what do you think is the, I, I mean, and yeah, are they going on like a freaking three day cruise or is this like a not proper nine day cruise, you know? Let's be honest. It likely is like there's only one place that they can go. They're yeah. like, you can only use it for this one three day excursion. You gotta go from Miami to Fort Lauderdale and back. And it's <laughs> for gonna a be weekend. a party because you got that champagne button. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, the disrespect. Like, I wait, before that, because this was such a stupid episode, I just wanna bring up a quick pie, pop culture aside, really random. Please. Have you seen Trish Paytas's? uh asmr youtube channel no it's incredible okay i will be watching it later i <laughs> so haven't i used to watch i haven't frenemies. tuned in no, to trish yeah. paytas since the, Did the we end of frenemies Fren- did we talk think, about frenemies i don't think well so. we only talked about it off the show because you we and i were both talking <laughs> about it 24 7 when it was airing yeah we and had evan too. so oh evan was deep in too we all had so many thoughts <laughs> but um So she's, yeah, she's about to have her baby, which is, you know, a big deal. But she's been, you know, I'll see her little, I follow her on Instagram, so I'll see her little promos for her ASMR. And I don't know what prompted me to actually go on her channel, but I went on her channel. These ASMR videos are works of art. And I'm not into (laughs) ASMR, but they are actually works of art. Like there was this flight attendant one she did and it like... The the acting, like the comedy infused through it, the 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 sound effects. Oh, were, so she's doing like full role playing ASMR. Some of them, yes, and they're actually incredible. But what's even more amazing is if you've ever you know gone down the Trish Paytas rabbit hole at any point during your career, you know that it can be quite a shit show. The comments are nothing but so positive. And so kind and everyone's just like, wow, Trish, like you're really amazing at this. Like, it's so cool that you've like found your passion. And like, <laughs> I fall asleep to these every night. And like, I just can't wait for you to post the because next one. Because normally That's, the comments under any Trish. No, 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 no. The comments are nothing but like pure positivity on every single video. Wow. Like, she's really found her niche and it's really like kind of beautiful to watch. <laughs> I just I, now, to now I'm very excited. I'm and excited I never, th- I've, I've seen ASMR videos, but I'm like, whatever. Like, um, yeah, what, like what is this? never really done it for no, me. No, I really was like, I have to go get my headphones and like put this in right now. And like it, it, it's actually like it's an experience cut to me a month from now it's like the only way i can fall asleep <laughs> is to trisha's asmr it's just on a loop in my bedroom i'm it's, like Evan, shh. 
It's wild. It's Trisha Tosh. She does like she does this one too, where she does this role play. It's like a twenty minute video of like um uh toxic showgirl does your makeup, and she's like in this full showgirl outfit, and she's like, hey. And she's doing all, all of it in whispering. And she's like, oh my God, like, no, you're going to love Bobby. He's like the best manager I've ever had. And she's like, no, you, sh- oh, you love my, oh my God, thank you. Like, you love my nails. Like, let me do your makeup. And then like, as she's doing, like pretending to do the makeup and she'll like whoosh the little, like the little brush over the camera and the mic at the same time. And it's like, it's such a bizarre I'm thing. Fascinated. And then she'll, you know, she'll be like, how old did you say you were again? Like, with, like and she's, she's like really she's good at this role <laughs> play of like actually being like and being kind of subtly mean that just kind of like ele- and you like feel like she's your friend and then as it ends, you know, you're like, oh my God, like she is this like toxic show girl. Per- anyway, she's just fully embodying these characters, fully, fully creating an, an audio and video experience and it's really a sight to see. I cannot wait. <laughs> so I just had to put it out I'm there. I'm about to dive in. I need something new, honestly. in the honestly. comment section and I was just... Really, truly intrigued. Anyway, just wanted to share about that. But anyway, back to the bachelor. <laughs> back to whatever this was. Back to whatever this was. Um, should we first take a pause to do a word from our sponsors? Yeah, let's take a quick pause okay. before we before we dive in because I would like to apologize in advance as we move through this because. It's so confusing. No, they should be imp- apologizing. Yeah, you know, what am I apologizing yes. about? We are just doing what we can with what was given us. I'm like, ABC, your numbers are tanking. And then you just give us one giant advertisement. Like, this no, is not for, the time to do this. No, for real. You're. It's like an influencer. You know, it's like when they're posting like five ads a day. You know, yes. you're like, oh, my God, I've seen nothing but ad content for the past three days in a row. That is what happened. They oversaturated. We had ads for like five different things. And, and it was so confusing. There was no through line. What did we have ads for? Let's just count it off real quick. Okay. Virgin, obviously. Virgin. And, 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 and for the app and for the actual boat. And by the way, I'm going to count Bachelor promos also as ads. Well, absolutely. Bachelor in Paradise. Bachelor in Paradise. Bachelor Happy Hour. Correct. Correct. Um, the bros. bros. Yes. And I heard that there was also a Kardashian preview in there, but I somehow, I was looking for it. I didn't see it. Maybe oh. by the time I watched it the next day, they were like, we're going to take it out. it was just an actual ad? Everyone, Maybe, I mean, listen. Like, you know, in between. Let's be real. We're talking about these advertisements. These don't include the 30 minutes worth of commercials that right. are happening in this two hour period. Of course. But people were making it sound are like it was actually money? A, a Kardashian ad. What on earth? I'm like, how much did this cruise ship cost? <laughs> you all have to do this. I mean, yeah, so that's like literally at least four. If not, I'm sure there was more. Oh, yeah. It was throughout the entire thing. There were like little little hints of ads here and there. It's tanking. Absolutely. The ship is going tanking. down. <laughs> Speaking of. Anyway, you all better okay. pull through with paradise, man. This better be the wildest season I've ever seen. And I'll be real with you. I've heard that it's bananas yeah but the preview didn't look bananas to me looked very spliced didn't it it did to, to, well i mean obviously preview is spliced but it uh, i was feeling like things were mashed together to try to make a thing that like wasn't a thing there wasn't a big moment where i was like oh shit this is gonna happen no it was just kind of chaos except like the, the episode like the most crazy thing i saw in the preview was fuck you jesse palmer mm-hmm all right before <laughs> before we dive in <laughs> broads fall is always the busiest time of the year around our house i think in most people's houses really obviously school starts back up again which means sports and activities start back up again and work always seems to pick up a lot in the fall if you can relate then i already know you need some help in the kitchen because who has time to cook when you've got a jam-packed schedule and to-do list a mile long but you still want to be eating these fresh, delicious, and healthy foods, right? That's where HelloFresh comes in. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned, partially prepared ingredients and seasonal recipes right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store, but still eat delicious home-cooked meals that are ready in less time than it takes to order takeout. But did you also know HelloFresh is good for more than just dinners? They have more than 30 dinner options to choose from each week, of course. But they also have more than 70 convenient options Mm -hmm. for snacks, breakfasts, standalone ingredients, and a lot more. You've probably also heard us talk about Green Chef on other episodes and how much we love them. Just to clear up any confusion, HelloFresh actually owns Green Chef. I like to switch back and forth between the two because you get even more variety to choose from. No matter how busy your schedule gets, you can 
always have something healthy on the table in moments thanks to HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Chatty16. Use code Chatty16. You're going to get 16 free meals across seven boxes and you're going to get three free gifts. Again, uh, you can get 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Chatty16 and use code Chatty16 today. So pets are the best, but sometimes with all that good, there can come a little stinky. I'm referring to the dreaded litter box, okay? Pretty Litter is on a mission to make litter boxes and cat litter a whole lot better for your cat and for you. Oh my gosh, with other cat litters from the pet store, I, first of all, tons of added fragrance, (sighs) disgusting. It never really kept the scent away, but with Pretty Litter, the crystals actually, they instantly trap the odor telling you it is instantaneous with other litters too i felt like i had to scoop it right away to get that smell out of the house but now i mean normally it's like i need a little bit of time Mm -hmm. i can't just be there scooping every time and pretty litter makes sure i don't have (laughs) to Mm -hmm. um plus it clumps you don't waste any litter you don't waste any money because your litter lasts longer and um yeah like i said you'll be doing a whole lot less scooping Uh, And by the way, that's not even the coolest part. Pretty Litter does something literally no other litter is doing. It's looking out for your cat's health. Sounds wild, I know, but Pretty Litter's crystals are actually designed to change color when they detect early signs of potential illness like urinary tract infections, kidney issues, and metabolic acidosis, which can cause diabetes. Cats are known for being mysterious about how they actually are feeling. So knowing Pretty Litter will let you know if something is up is such a relief. Once you try Pretty Litter, it'll be the only litter you ever use. Go to prettylitter.com slash chatty to save 20% on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash chatty to save 20% on your first order. Prettylitter.com slash chatty. Okay, so should we talk about the only part that I cared about, which was Avon's hometown? Oh my God. No, no, no. Let's get even more specific. The only part that you cared about, which was the witch knocking the table onto the floor. (laughs) Gray and I (laughs) rewound that part so many times. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Jess sent me like a totally an audible voice message when she was listening to this being like, what are you you talking about? Like it was like this, and I was like, I haven't watched the episode yet. I don't know what you're talking about. And then when I watched the episode, I was like, This is what Jess was talking about, and it did not disappoint. I was watching. It did not disappoint. When I was watching it, I had to literally pause to send Becca this voice memo, and you couldn't understand anything I was saying because I couldn't stop laughing. Unreal. And I was so confused as to why I wasn't seeing people posting about this. No one posted about it. I wasn't seeing it. Maybe I missed it, but I had literal tears oh it was so funny like, it sent me into a laughing spiral that i cannot describe you know what really blew my mind about oh. it too is like she didn't say a word after that <laughs> happened and so rachel kept being like is this a bad sign you're like trying to chat with her of like oh my god what does this mean do you need help with this the woman is just silent She's like pissed. She's embarrassed. She's humiliated. She's pissed. I don't know what she was experiencing, but she did not say a word. She didn't even say like, oh, it happens. Like, no, she was just silently like, who's going to help me pick up this table? Can someone give me a hand with this? And then Avon helps her pick it back up. And then she doesn't say a word after that. Doesn't respond to a thing. Rachel says nothing. She's like, get me off this camera. The second that this woman entered into frame my life changed. Oh, of course. When you wanted she, to, you were ready to zip yourself up into her skin no, and her voice. A thousand percent. I was like, I must become yeah, Lorelai yeah. the second <laughs> that they walk into the shop. She throws she open the curtain. Throws, Hello, Hello, I'm Lorelai, <laughs> the love witch. How are you doing? The oldest <laughs> shop in... No, the country, the world. I'm like the oldest shop in the, the country. The universe, in fact, <laughs> the oldest shop in the country. I'm like, is that verifiable? I'm like Lorelai. Like, where are, are the stats? Are they outside the building? I Can was we see the, witch the plaque? They couldn't burn. <laughs> the way she spun out from behind the curtain. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> how did she even knock off the table? What no. happened? The level, the the roller coaster. It was her. It was her. Oh, <laughs> the roller coaster. The roller coaster that Lorelai took us on when she busted out of the draperies, and then, and then the way she was interacting with her famous love spell, and she then was holding <laughs> Rachel's hand, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my god, 
there's kind of this intimate moment yeah. where she's holding her hand and looking into her eyes yeah, and she's I love like that you are looking for clarity in yeah, your life you need to be confident in your choices <laughs> you right. need to know when he's going to open up yeah. more you need to be vulnerable i'm yeah. like oh my god lorelei is nailing it yeah rachel was like so feeling it needed it yeah so feeling it and then she starts to do the spell and she's putting everything and over Rachel's the candle like, and they're wow. like wow and then after she finishes it she's like marry me marry part May we all meet again. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, first and of all, I'm not falling. <laughs> <laughs> Smash. And Rachel's like, our love candle. And then suddenly, suddenly, suddenly the accent drops. She's like, someone give me a hand with this fucking table. I just doesn't could, say another word. I couldn't get over the fact that this woman was so incredible and then as she has her parting line that she is after she said by the way she wrapped it biggest smile ever she was like i just nailed it nailed <laughs> this audition and then on national television as she's spinning away she <laughs> she was like trying to push past them and just knocks over a everything giant a giant pentagram glass table giant and by the way not a table that had one or two things on it like <laughs> there were a hundred potions and herbs and everything went flying. I like have never candles. seen on the show when they show bloopers. I'm like, nothing is compared. No, to, someone's swatting away a bee. Why the fuck do I care about that? Show me the table smash. Or even on like, the floor. like, uh, uh, Alec, when he kept falling. Did like, I tell you about the time when the cameraman was in front of the door and someone opened it and he literally did like a triple <laughs> oh, yeah. somersault with his camera and was like, oh, ah, ah. It was like the Grape Lady Falls video. He was just on the ground, like, ah, oh, rolling around and everyone was just standing there, like mouths oh. agape. Those are the bloopers they do not show. You're they like, just, show us that shit. Yes. That, the Lorelei knocking i i'm Thank like you. i i really i watched the entire season for that moment i got so much joy and i rewound and watched that 12 times because i was like she knocked it over right because the first oh, time she definitely I couldn't did, believe but it. i don't even know <laughs> how like she just bumped it off i think her cape got That's what stuck. i thought it too, looked like, like what did it get stuck, stuck on <laughs> There was nothing. It was a round table. It was a circle. There was nothing for it to catch on. I think on. it like twisted around the base. <laughs> and then when she started to kind of spin away, marry me, marry Pot, may we all meet again. Whoosh. And then just <gasps> over it. <laughs> I just could not get over Rachel continuing to try to interact oh. with her. And she just shut after they put the table I back was on, imagining, she didn't say a word. I was imagining, like, number one, the feeling of, like, oh, my God, this was my moment, and I just <laughs> made everything explode. But number two, I was picturing in Lorelai's head that she was like, oh, this is a bad sign. This is not a good sign like, I for their get love. Up. I think she was also, like, pissed because she's like, these are my special things. Yeah, that stuff's probably, I mean, like, ground. that's an expensive table. A like, a, 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 <laughs> that large of a glass table, that's expensive. At least the glass didn't shatter. Everyone needs to go visit Lorelai's shop. I yeah. will go to Salem. I will book my flight to go see Lorelai. So, what in a the weird flesh. place to be from. Like, yeah. To be from Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, Avon's not, though. Okay. He literally went on Instagram and was like, by the way, pardon me because I'm going to forget exactly, but I think he said it's like, I'm from Beverly, Massachusetts. Uh -huh. By the way, I'm not from Salem. Yeah. So okay. they definitely were like, here, this is going to be what your date is. Witchy. Like, I don't think Avon planned this. No, and we didn't date. go to anyone's house either. We were at a restaurant. Which, by the way, I really liked. Yeah, I thought that was fine. I'm like, bring on the restaurant dates if I'm the sure. lead because it feels like a safe neutral. zone. It's a neutral. Fully neutral. It's, yeah. There's no, like, I'm not walking into your home and your childhood photos aren't on the walls or they're not putting fake childhood photos of you on another random mantelpiece. And the, and also those suites that they put them in were weird. The, the vibes were The vibes off. were off. Talk about haunted vibes. Yeah, no, that was not right. Not that was right. not right. I still have the image very clear in my head. Going backwards, though, how funny was it when Rachel's like, I'm really nervous. And and then suddenly he remembers, oh, fuck. Yeah, this is the first time my parents have been together since they got divorced. Whoa. <laughs> and he's like, but it'll be fine. <laughs> Did not quell any of her nerves at no, all. No, I was like, oh, shit. But here's my thing, though. I, this is the thing about that moment that I appreciated. Yeah. He was honest. Oh, yeah, he was honest. Oh, yeah, he was definitely honest. We didn't get the Tino. 
They're yeah. going to love you. It's all no, fine. He was like, you. just FYI, they've never been together since my college graduation. They also haven't liked either of my girlfriends. They haven't approved of either of them. I, to me, that is called one million green flags if I'm dating mm. someone. I'm like, oh shit, okay, this is not a comfortable conversation to be having for you, but you're going to be straightforward with me about the fact that it might not go great with your family. Maybe one million green flags compared to Tino. In real life, I would say it's a yellow flag. It would be a proceed well, sure, if you're slowly. Like, sure, sure, sure. But I'm I mean, like, why did his parents not approve of either of his past girlfriends? That's true. That's true. Strange. Yeah, I guess maybe on this show, it's all the green flags. Because yeah, right, sure. I'm like, you're trying to... Again, contrasted with someone like Tino. A Tino. That he's a, marry him. Well, and speaking of the Tino contrast, talk about a contrast with families who are right. worried about worried about Avon's exactly. No, no, no. I literally was thinking the exact same thing because Avon's dad had all the same questions. He didn't really let up about it, but he also wasn't going out of his way to make her feel uncomfortable. He was so he handled it <laughs> both both the mom and the dad were so gracious. Yeah. They weren't like turning it on for the camera, like over the top. Like Either way, oh yeah. Oh my God, we love you. It was like- I know, I really liked his parents, they actually. Were, they were- I really liked them. They were, um, so obviously I loved Jason's parents, but I will say if I'm a lead, the energy of Avon's parents would make me feel the best. They felt so normal. Yeah, because I'd be like, okay, these they're concerned. They're having all the- the questions that i mean honestly yeah yeah the real questions the real questions yeah. um but they also were so gracious yeah and were so welcoming yeah. with her but then they weren't you could tell they weren't like oh we're on tv no there wasn't that tv energy what i like about avon and his mom and his dad it's <sighs> what you see is what you get mm -hmm. and i that's really nice to see on tv and really nice when you're dating someone you're like i know exactly although i think there's definitely like like laura lee was saying i think there's definitely more to avon that he hasn't really like shared course, but um but i don't think he's like trying to obstruct anything and i still feel like what he's been giving her is like who he is so yes. i just like that what you see is what you get with him and with his family and i loved the fact when um avon's dad aj and rachel were sitting together and he started to ask the questions and then he wrapped the question with but are you like a hundred percent ready to move forward yes. with Avon. And yes, and she said, like, honestly, like, I can't say 100%. And he was like, I respect that. Yeah. And it was great And exchange. it was a great moment yeah. because it's like, he asked that hard question in a kind way mm -hmm. sh where she was comfortable to be completely honest. And then it was like, fair. Yeah. And then he didn't push her and go, no. well, I'm concerned. It was like, all right, we're having... Mm -hmm. And then when he was sitting alone with Avon, he was like, I like her a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She really like took, mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't let up on her and she gave me, yeah. And I, his mom, when he, when she uh, was with Rachel was like, I have to be honest with you, the way that he's like being super affectionate with you. Like, this is a big thing for Avon. Yeah. Like bringing you here. And, and then I saw Avon, it was really sweet. I saw Avon post um, on his Instagram stories after the show aired a photo of him and his mom and then a photo of him and his dad thanking them like the fact that you both come together to support me regardless yeah. of anything like means so much like yeah. think about how intense it is they haven't seen each other in years and they're gonna do this and how gracious and lovely they were no they were like they were great i love them i would not mind and we're gonna get into this the rest of the, the thing uh -huh. but i would not mind even for bachelor okay i'm so happy you brought this up because I'm distraught that I haven't been talking about Avon for Bachelor the past few weeks. Well, we haven't really because I think we haven't gotten they to just know haven't him. shown us Avon. Yeah, and I'm like Avon would be a great Bachelor, and I think we are going to see more of him in the mm -hmm. coming weeks. And I think that you know we're going to get to know more of him in that, and hopefully, and in after the final rose. I don't think that he's Rachel's end game. Yeah, I mean it doesn't <sighs> look that way, and and I could. It's like. It's. I think it's just like on paper he's really great, but I think she just has like a lot more like you know intense and you know she's someone that goes more for the intense, passionate. Thing. And we see uh, what looks like is going down with Zach and Rachel that that wasn't misleading in the preview. Wait, what? Oh yeah, what? So you know how last week's preview they showed Zach being like it was a full one eighty, and he's talking yes. to Jesse Palmer. Yes. 
Well, in this preview, we see that again. And then we see him and Rachel sitting together. And she's just like, I don't understand, like, how you could tell me that and then say that. And they're like, in an argument. So I think the 180 is a bad 180. Oh, no. So do you think it's Tino? I think probably. I mean, oh unless my God. there's drama at the end, but it doesn't look great. So maybe they'll do double Bachelor Zach and Avon. I don't think so. I don't think Zach will be the Bachelor. He's too, like, I, I like him, but yeah. he's just too, like, blah. Mm -hmm. I would much prefer Avon. Also, yeah. Avon... Um, I, I do actually really like Zach. I think he's... Yeah, he yeah. seems like a great guy. Yeah. Um, but, but Avon... I will say though, you know, at the end of the at the end of the hometown, when Avon, which by the way, he was so darling, how he was, you could tell he was so happy how it went. Aren't you kind of glad too? Now looking at it, isn't it kind of nice to have Avon as a little standalone uh, piece before the mental all? I didn't hate it. Well, trust me, I was pissed about the fact that he wasn't in it. Yeah, but because this was the worst mental all ever, I'm like, thank you for one good moment. <laughs> it also left me like remembering him more than the other guys, like because it was That's more fresh true. in my mind. That's so I'm true. like, this could be in his favor for the whole bachelor thing. That's I don't know. Very true. That's very true. He was right top of the episode, you know. Well, he was, yeah, he was darling. You could tell he was just like the relief was washing over him after the date because it went so well. And then he tells her that he's falling in love with her. And they do have quite good chemistry. Yeah, yeah. And she was just so happy that he yeah. told her that. And yeah, he's just, I'm a big fan. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Avon. Um, but he just seems like a really solid guy. I just, I just, I, I like him a lot too. Yeah. It looks like there also might be some drama with him in hometowns but i can't quite read if it's edited to make it maybe look like him but it's one of the other guys mm. but the zach looked pretty the zach drama looked, yeah excuse me but the zach drama looked pretty clear in overnights i think i just think what's gonna happen with rachel and avon i just don't think it's i think it's strong i just don't think it's strong enough to carry through mm -hmm. to the, like the engagement thing i think that things are just a little more even if there is drama with zach there's just more like a little more like um not even chemistry but just passion you know yes. of like a lot more like strong, like moving feelings for the other guys. I think Avon would be a great choice as like a partner and all that. And mm -hmm. she might learn her lesson the hard way with whoever she picks. But this is what I want to say too, because I really like the idea of Avon for Bachelor. I, and honestly, I know they would destroy Jason, but if she doesn't pick Jason, I kind of would like to see, I kind of would like to see Jason well, as Bachelor. Jason and Avon are my, crushes of the season mm. so i would be quite happy <laughs> to see either of them as bachelor but i am worried i also don't think jason would do it i don't think so either he was like you said he was about to i yeah. know you said this last time he was about to quit the sh quit the show in the beginning and i just, mean you never know though he might all of a sudden be like well that wasn't i got a good edit and maybe it's gonna be i could get comfortable doing this more maybe he could be i don't know but i will say this i'm gonna we're gonna talk about it more when we get to it but I I want to give this disclaimer heads uh, right right in the front because I'm going to go off a little bit about the Nate thing but this is why I do I feel like I'm being force fed the Nate for Bachelor edit mm -hmm. and it's really bugging me. Mm -hmm. I'm really I really feel like they're trying to shove it down my throat and I don't <laughs> like that. I don't like someone telling me what to do and I feel like <laughs> the Bachelor is trying to tell me that like Nate's an amazing choice for Bachelor mm -hmm. and I am just not buying what they're selling. So that's my disclaimer. It's part of the reason why I have strong feelings about the Nate thing. It's not objectively really about the whole Nate situation. I mean, I do have feelings about it objectively, but what's really influencing the passion when it comes to what we're going to talk about with Nate, it really is just, I feel like I'm being really force fed this narrative. Okay. I really feel like they're just shoving it down my throat. Okay. okay. And, it's, and it's pissing yeah, me off. You don't like people to tell you what to do. No. You want to make up your own mind. Yes. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, well, I, Nate's very charming and all this, but we have these other guys that are like just really solid guys who don't have like any red flags that have come up with mm -hmm. them. And I just would prefer that. Understandable. We'll get to that. Understandable. Let's go into the mental law. Let's go into the mental law. <laughs> One of the... Jess. Yeah. Uh -huh. We need to talk about Roby. Okay. What was going what on? What happened? <laughs> what happened? What happened? 
You know what I think happened? <laughs> I think Roby felt disrespected because he was like right away sent home. And Roby came in, I believe, with the most followers because he's like famous magician. He per- This man performs right. for A-listers and then he gets written off immediately. And I think that's why maybe why he came in with a fury to be like, I'm going to show you all. He was coming for everyone. He was oh, yeah. coming for everyone. The makeover changed him. I did not like it. <laughs> I didn't know how I felt about it. I, I was going back and forth. I was I, going back and forth. I actually At first just, I was like, no. And then I was like, well. Oh. I just felt uncomfortable for him. Oh, because yeah. then because he was really just coming hard for everyone. Of course, eventually it turned around where everyone's just like, bro, you shut the fuck up. Like, stop. <laughs> like, Ethan is just like, you were literally in the mansion for four hours. And then I felt bad for him because then everyone was clapping and the was just kind of sitting there smiling. And I was like, stop. Dude, I know. Just stop. The energy needed to be like, you need to just like take a deep also, breath. Also, I felt like it was he wasn't being him. I know. I felt like he was just being like the, doing this weird, inauthentic like performance. But also, we don't know Roby. So maybe that is Roby. No, but it was like his smile when Ethan came at him and everyone was clapping. It was just like he was, uh, you know, it was humiliating. And it was like, he, I forgot that he didn't even last the first night so i was like oh no it's true he he was only there for four hours he, and he was like coming for some he of the was men just giving the energy of like you remember in school where there would be the cool kid that was like low-key kind of a bully who would make a joke you know but everyone kind of wanted to be near him to kind of like laugh and roby was like his sidekick who the kid kind of like who the, the 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 cool bully kid will like really like make fun of in front of all his friends, but then Roby would be standing there being like <laughs> <laughs> laughing along as the cool kid oh, is making fun of him because he Roby. wants to be close to the cool kid. That was like the energy that was that I that it, it was making me really uncomfortable. I felt uncomfortable the moment um because you know we were Roby we were Roby uncomfortable the moment he opened his mouth the moment the that they actually all. showed him is when I felt uncomfortable and he <laughs> did the card trick and like the rose turned to fire poof, and I was like oh god this is the energy we're coming into the mental <laughs> hall <laughs> which is like you know god bless this is the moment this is your moment but it was like performance energy out the gate like all the other men were just sitting and waving and Roby first person is standing up kaboosh, like, you know, like a fire into a rose or whatever. I'm like, this is already a lot. <laughs> and does he even did he even touch sand? I do not believe he touched sand. No. Maybe for a day or something. I don't think so. No, I think Roby it was like a one and done situation. Oh, man. Well, um, <laughs> that actually is interesting, too, is that the mental was filmed after Paradise. And, you know. I had some thoughts about that. Yeah, I did. Uh, specifically in regards to Logan, with all the men all of a sudden coming for Logan a little bit. I was like, is there something going on with the fact that some of these for men sure. are a little jealous that they did it? Oh, get for on sure. paradise. Oh, for sure. Or that in paradise, like they said in the preview, ev- all the dudes sweeping. were, all the girls were all over him, <laughs> all over him. And you know what? I am skipping ahead, but I liked the way Logan handled everything on this mental all. I cannot lie to you. I enjoyed Logan. Me too. And you know, I was saying that towards the rap when everyone was coming for him about the the back and forth of the Gabby Rachel. I'm like, I'm sorry. And I'll say it a million times. Um, Is it somebody who I'd go tell a friend of mine to go date? No. No, But I enjoy him on my screen. I also don't think like, um, I don't know. He's not giving me red flags. We'll see what paradise looks like for him. I'm worried for him for paradise. I I think he also looked very tired. Yeah. But he always kind of has like a little bit of like bags under his eyes. It could be that. He also was of course, the only quote unquote villain. Exactly. No, no, no. So That's what I was going to say. He knew the pressure was going to be on because they had to deflect all their energy from. Also, by the way, okay, yeah, all right. We're I, getting all over I, the place. I but. loved, I loved his moment when Jesse Palmer, when the guys all first are sitting there, yeah. and he right away throws the question at Logan, and he's like, "So, Logan, what was the best part of uh, for you of dating two bachelorettes?" The first question that like, comes out of Jesse Palmer's Bitch. mouth. And, and Logan just looks at him and he goes, 
um, I guess the lessons learned. And then he does this face at Jesse. He goes, thanks for asking, Jesse. Like so annoyed already. Like, thanks, Jesse. Well, Appreciate all of the you. energy that was supposed to go towards Hayden and Chris went towards him. Not only him, but also Jacob. And and I have to say, I know that Jacob was a dick when he like said that. to Super shitty. Yeah. But remember, you and I both said it on that episode. We were like, or maybe it was just me that said it. But I was like, ah, I really feel like it was very a misguided intention and he to me was a very different energy from to me was very different energy from like a Hayden or like a Chris like I felt like again very misguided came across really like an asshole but I don't really believe I, I never got the vibe that he Jacob is an asshole okay so my thought with Jacob was because I because you know people have asshole moments. I guess that's what I'm saying. Throughout you know? the show, he before he did what he did with Gabby, yeah. I was like he was making me laugh. Yeah. I was like surprised by him. But then I will say, and then and then after he did what he did with Gabby, he did make an apology yeah. that was good on Instagram. Um, but then there's been moments, honestly, like on Instagram where I'm like Oh, I haven't seen him on Instagram at yeah, all. Yeah, where I'm like, uh, like he mm. he was making comments like like what? Like what did he say? He like you took a, a screenshot of an article talking about roses for everybody and he made some comment about like, oh yeah, judge me for I don't know, talking about his workouts or the way he eats. And it was just shitty. Like oh, it was yeah, just yeah. shitty behavior. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I felt like on this episode, they of course were directing heat towards Logan and Jacob. For me, Jacob literally looked like he had like Okay, did he say he said all the right things? Yeah. When he was confronted? Yeah. He literally owned up to everything. Yeah. Everything I did was wrong. Yeah. It felt very scripty to me. Mm. And it looks like on Paradise that Jacob is a main character and I think he's going to be like one of the Paradise favorites. Really? And I kind of got the energy that like maybe there's a little bit of coaching going on I of like how to handle it. I think it. there's sure. some coaching happening. Sure. I felt like Termaine put it really well yeah. because he was saying like like Tremaine thought what Jacob said was more painful than what Hayden said yeah. initially. But he was like, I also could gather that you were trying to cut the ties right. quickly. Right. And what you said was really hurtful. The the words were not. Yeah. The words were not reflecting, <laughs> right, right. reflecting what you, right. the intention right. might have been, right. but the right. impact was painful. Right. right, 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 right. That's how that's how I felt about it. And yeah. I also think that the context of that, too, is in the context of everything else that was happening with Gabby that night. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was kind of like, so everyone was just the the way that, you know, Roby. <laughs> Roby was like, you were a fucking dick. I'm like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> Roby, like, Roby, well, here's the Roby, the energy, it was just through the roof, dude. It was through the roof. I was super anxious watching the Roby. Every He's time like, that Roby was on my like screen. He was like about to fight Jacob. I was like, okay, okay. Every time Roby was on my screen, I was in absolute anxiety. <laughs> in absolute anxiety. Um, but yeah, do I love Jacob? No, but I was just sort of like, I think it was actually just mostly Roby who was really coming for him hard. It was, we didn't have a lot of villains this yeah. season. Or I guess we didn't have like... Um, <laughs> We didn't have any long-term villains. No, we did not. Except for Logan. But I'm sorry. But, no, he's not a villain. I will... It's, I will die on this hill. Does anyone actually think that, though, aside from oh, the guys? Yeah. yeah. No, bullshit. I guess, bullshit. I guess he got, like, a ton of shit via social media. That's just media. people projecting because they have been hurt by a guy who ended up dumping them for another girl. I thought That's what I think. when Logan was in the hot seat with Jesse, by the way... What he kept saying, you guys, <laughs> read between the lines. He literally kept I know, saying, I know, I didn't have time to talk to her. He kept trying to drop that in to be like, hello, audience, please understand. I wasn't allowed to talk and to I her. And I will say, a lot of the guys that were coming from him for him had not been there very long. That's and true. I think that all the guys that had been there longer did understand. Like we had been saying, they did understand, seem to understand that, no, he couldn't have talked to them. 1,000%. And the only guys who were there who did bring this up just graciously said, like, Ethan and Spencer were both like, listen... It kind of sucked because we both hadn't had a lot of time with and her. They didn't so want that the group date date got canceled. So yeah, she was upset. it was yeah. hard and right. it sucked. Right. And then like one of us got sent home because you, because you showed up. Yeah. So that was like, I totally understand that frustration. Right. I would have been frustrated about that too. Right. Yeah. And it's like ultimately though, and what the way that he phrased it when he was just basically like, you know, I, he, he worded it 
so well, Gray and I both thought where he was like, you know, I'm not going to give up the potential chance of someone who could be my wife. Like, I'm sorry. And I was like, yeah. The thing about the whole Logan dynamic is that ultimately isn't this like what the bachelor is supposed to be about and like then people pursuing really the person that mad. you have the chance of falling in love with and i thought that was ridiculous the way the guys kept saying like he was jumping shit or jumping sides because i don't remember who said it because oh i think i think rachel actually wasn't that into you so that's why you decided to jump to gabby i'm like what shut up i'm like i think both of them were fairly into logan yeah yeah and i think that Look, he I don't think anyone who he seems like a smart enough guy. I don't think that anyone who is that smart would intentionally like try to switch sides and break up with the girl and then ho- try to get in with the other. I mean, that's a lot of risk. If he was really just there to try to make it far, you think he would just try to that's run with thing. whoever he picked. Everyone's I don't believe just that. saying like, oh, he's in it for the game. I do not believe and that. I'm like, if he was in it for the game, he'd stick with Rachel and then like bounce maybe if he got to top two or something or say no and then hope for a bachelor edit or get a great paradise yeah. edit it or whatever uh or go go to paradise excuse me but he took a massive risk that he knew meant that he could look like the villain and i believe that he was more into gabby you could see the pain on his face when rachel like gave him the rose and you know he was like he was all torn up about it because he was really way more into gabby and i believe what he said too by the way when he was saying yeah the rose where he was like when she gave it to me I i was stressing out because i'm like oh my god Maybe there is something more here and I can explore that. I'm like, again, this was like the second week. Yeah. Th- they didn't know either of them, at, like barely at all. Yeah. And sure, I think for some people, maybe they f- had an instant, like clear chemistry with one of them versus another. But I believe it's 100% possible that you meet two people <laughs> and you go, oh, they're both cute. I like their vibe. Like I'm interested kind of in getting to know both of them. Yeah. I don't know. I I thought he handled it really, really well. I felt like the way that he apologized to um to Rachel, yeah, was really it was felt just very honest. And yeah, it, it was what he said to her when they were when they were uh, on the show, where it was like, I don't have any expectations now that Gabby's going to keep me first yeah. of all, and I'm so sorry that I'm adding to the pain of this. And then he apologized to her, like he's like, I should have just in the moment rejected the rose. Yeah. And I don't know. I thought it was just all good. I agree. I agree. Do you want to take a quick uh, sponsor break before we talk about quickly Chris and Hayden? Oh, yes. Because I have some thoughts. Yeah. I have some thoughts Me here. Too. Okay. Listen, everyone has a fantasy or a few that they would love to indulge in. Maybe you've always dreamed of taking a last minute European vacation and having a whirlwind romance in Italy, or maybe you've secretly had a thing for a trainer at your gym for the longest time. There are so many ways to get steamy this year, okay? And Dipsy is the app that you need to get you there. Dipsy is incredible. It's so good. (laughs) I always say this on the ad reads, but I just want to let you guys know it is not corny it's so cool so it's hot it's full of hundreds of short sexy stories waiting for you to explore the voice actors i don't even believe that they're actors i feel like no. they are following <laughs> around real. people with mics and their <laughs> sexual experiences it's incredible um they're known for their huge library of audio stories but you can also browse a collection of written stories equally as spicy equally as good love some erotica if you're looking for something to wind down before bed they also have uh other content available like sleep stories and wellness sessions too i love dipsy so much because i mean we all know it can be hard to find even five minutes to focus on yourself and if you do have five minutes good luck turning off the never-ending thought cycles of to-do lists and reminders and schedules why don't brains come with an off button okay but with dipsy Just put in a pair of headphones, choose your story, and let the characters take you on a journey. Trust us, your to-do list is the last thing you'll be thinking about if you've got a Dipsy story on, okay? Um, Yeah, also one of my friends texted me and she was like, dude, I downloaded Dipsy because I always hear you and Jess talk about it. And she's like, and now I'm just jogging down my neighborhood and people have no idea I'm listening to like full blown audio porn while I'm doing my jog. We love it. Um, For (laughs) listeners of the show, Dipsy's offering an extended 30 day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash chatty. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A. It's like a dip in the sea. Stories.com slash chatty. Dipsystories.com slash chatty. 
Oh my God, Jess, wait, by the way, before we keep talking about this, so guys, I'm going to another, okay, first of all, this weekend, Gray and I are going to a wedding in Oregon. Wedding number 400 of the summer. In Oregon. like <laughs> In Oregon specifically. I, I like literally live there part time now. Oh my God. And of course, even though we're going there for three days, I am sneaking away for one day and one night to go back to <laughs> the Cobb, the Cobb workshop place because they're like plastering the inside of one of the buildings. And I'm like, ah! so I like text my Cobb friends, <laughs> my Cobb workshop friends. And I'm like, can I, you got, does anyone want to, does it, yeah, my Cobb chat, <laughs> Cobb chat, it's an app. Um, I'm like, does anybody want to drive with me? Like go down to Junction City and, you know, work on this. And a couple of my friends are like, oh my God, yeah. How so fun. I'm gonna get away and Grace like what <laughs> I'm like you have so many friends in Portland Grace like I thought we were gonna have a romantic weekend away this wedding yeah. and you're like bye it's time for Cobbland <laughs> yeah I gotta go but it's so funny I'm like do you want to come he's like no he's gonna like stay and he's party like, with his friends not. so he'll have a great time I'll have a great time it's gonna be a win-win but um I'm also, you know, taking taking another earthen plaster and earthen floor workshop in yes, Mendocino in a couple of weeks. But I emailed them three days ago being like, do you guys have Wi-Fi or cell service out there? I'll just have to take a, a, a two hour meeting in my off time on Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, to like to record. call in and record. Yeah. And no one's gotten back to me yet. So I'm like, we'll see. But I think I have to make it happen. Like I might have to book a hotel room with Wi-Fi like and drive like 30 minutes because, dude, this is one of the finales. It's going to be one of a big episode. Although you did miss I last the Greg you episode. Missed the Greg I episode. missed the Greg episode <laughs> when I was in Puerto Vallarta. And I was like, are you joking me? <laughs> but I am going to, we're going to, we got to find we'll a way to make it. it. We'll it's figure it gonna, out. It's got to happen one way or another. Because like, I really, I'm invested. <laughs> well, that would be a real big bummer for you to miss. <laughs> anyway. So I'll I just, just have to give that update. I'll just set up some sort of blow up doll that looks like you and I'll just talk at it the entire time. Or you'll just like switch voices and you're like, I think Becca would have this hot take. You're I'd just be like, to... I will just try to transcend my own mind and try to live in your space and body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Anyway, just had to give that update. So I'm really going to we're really going to try to make it happen because it's going to be not next week, but the week after. And oh, that's going week. to be. Fantasy Suite Part 2, I think. Yes! Yeah. You can't miss that one because it looks like it's going to be so dramatic. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. Um, 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 So I didn't... I, I had only seen clips from the Chris episode because I didn't actually watch that episode because I was actually cobbing, incidentally. Oh, yes. Like, right okay. at the beginning. So you didn't see that. But then I was seeing the clips and then Gray had kind of told me about it. Yeah. Um... Listen, with the Chris with the Chris and Hayden portion of this episode, I don't know why they both were not at Honestly, the I have to say, I honestly have to say, like, good on them. Like Just I to be actually like, I'm not kinda, gonna do that to no, myself. I honestly kind of respect them for it and respect and uh Remember when Luke P just like walked off, but he had to go to like someone's wedding or something? Oh, and then yeah. they made it He's like, like, I he only have left. so much time. Yes. And then they made it look like he just stormed off stage <laughs> in the middle of it. Oh, my God. Um, but I kind of like have respect for that because I'm like, look, these dudes did some shitty things, some shitty behavior. But I also do appreciate someone setting a boundary with the show and being like, I'm not doing this fucking dance anymore. Nope. I Not showing up. And I have to say, like, villains of the future. Just don't do show it. up. Just don't fucking show up. Because honestly, how much could they rag on them without them being there? They said like a couple things, made some jokes about them. Okay, well here was here was my thing within okay. the so not so much the Chris situation. I understand. Oh, did you wait? Did you know that Hayden deleted his apology post on Instagram? I did not know that. <laughs> oh damn. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, both of the behavior was not okay on the no. show. Um, I felt like I get why then the show brought them up even though they weren't there right. because they it's were huge still parts of this well, well Hayden especially Hayden especially but it, but it's like okay especially when there's not a lot of drama in a season and it's like okay these are the two of like the main factors of drama that happened I mean honestly the the two real drama factors by the way I'm surprised they didn't try to like pay or at least Hayden like pay him to come on well Hayden in the clip of paradise he's in paradise well that might also be why he didn't show up I know that I'm very curious about like what that dynamic is because I'm thinking if he's in 
like uh, on paradise that they would be like, you have to come because we're going to maybe, I don't know if they're going to give him an arc, if they're going to make it No, I don't worse. think so. Because Probably also not. the guys, well, I guess the guys wouldn't have seen what happened until when the show airs, like in terms of all of his stuff with Rachel and all that, right? So like even the other guys from the season, like I, I was thinking, oh, they might like really come for Hayden, but they didn't really like see a lot of what went down besides the conversations I mean, that he had been having with them. I feel like though most of the stuff that went down with Hayden yeah. was with the men. Yeah, but they didn't say anything in the moment at all to him when he was like saying all that stuff, right? A few right? of them did. Well, they a like few spoke of them up, did. but like yeah. there wasn't confrontation energy and I guess they sort of all had the opportunity to like have that kind of confrontation. I, I personally thought that where he looked... I mean, he looked really bad with the stuff that he said around the guys, but I felt like it was really the cherry on top with the whole Rachel thing, oh, everything you were sure. saying about her after. For sure. And none of the guys had seen that. That's so I true. was like, I, I don't, I also at the same time, I was going to say maybe they all confront him in paradise, but then it's like they were all there and had the opportunity to confront him on the season and they really didn't. <sighs> yeah. And they also won't have seen that yet when it all airs. So, yeah. um, so I don't know what's going to happen with him. Yeah, on paradise. Yeah, I'm not sure, but he might just be a huge asshole on Paradise as well. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised. But, okay. Here is my only takeaway. Yeah. So I understand how the show, these are like the two most dramatic villains. They, yeah. they have to address what went down with them on the season, even if they're not there yeah. to speak up, right? right? Which is uncomfortable. Right. I believe... It, it also, was also just dumb. I... Okay, with the Hayden part, the Hayden piece, obviously, I've made it very clear how I feel about sure, the things sure, that sure. Hayden yeah, yeah, totally. said are. Totally, totally. Not good. Yeah. I was in, sh I was yeah, in yeah. shock. You've made it more than clear, yeah. What I did have a problem with was the audience members that, by the way, the show gave them signs to hold <laughs> that say you know, free Rambo, justice for Rambo, some guys dressed like Rambo holding Rambo's ducky and they're like chanting about like freeing Rambo. And I'm like, okay, listen, I don't like the guy. What he did was not okay, but this feels really fucking dark. Yeah. Like this is actually, now we're, we're actually talking about an animal right now that's yeah. like in the midst of passing away. Yeah. And you're like screaming about free Rambo yeah. from clearly an owner who does really care about yeah. this animal. Yeah. Regardless of the fact that what he did was absolutely yeah. like just not good. Yeah. But the the dog part, I, I was f so uncomfortable. Yeah. It made me feel like really icky. Well, again, I don't, like, really I don't know icky. if I talked about this on the episode, but like it really was interesting to me how like... um the clip when we initially did like the 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 face reading thing and you know i was going off about him and his dog being like i don't care about your fucking dog or whatever i had no idea that his dog was dying during that and people were pissed watching it being like oh my god his dog is actually dying of cancer but then when it came out and he was an asshole then suddenly no one cared at all anymore and i'm like oh my god so like now because someone's mean like now you don't care about him anymore or care about what he's going through with this animal because you don't like him anymore. So suddenly, like, none of it matters and it's all fair territory. That says a lot to me about the audience. Like, it was just very, um, it just felt very, like, group, like, free Rambo, free. And it was just like you take his dog. What are you implying to take his like, dog dude, away from him? Like, I, <laughs> weird. I can completely recognize and agree. That his behavior was terrible. I don't want him on paradise. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Absolutely not. After well, he, that he's behavior. Not, he's, well, he's also just like, yeah, he's not even like entertaining. But it's I'm just like, like, after ew. that behavior, I don't want him on paradise. Yeah. After calling women bitches. Like, mm. no, I do not think that he should be on paradise. But that then, the way that then the show handled that with just this crowd and these signs and like the ducky. And it was just like, this is, makes me feel really not like really icky and not okay and i felt really like jacob ugh, i did not jacob rambo isn't the one that needs training hayden needs training i'm like oh my god shut up you guys look like such fucking idiots I'm right like, now stop first of all i know you've been workshopping that line it doesn't even make sense okay nobody talked about nobody rambo talk needing training <laughs> it doesn't even make sense okay so just stop just like i get it you know what 
talk about the talk about the things that he said that weren't okay let the men have their moment to be like yeah this is what happened and we were super like have that moment talk about that but to make it then this whole thing it's just so unnecessary and just like icky when someone's not there and well, I guess they made the choice not to be there. And then I, I do understand that. But which like, I honestly, ugh. honestly think was a good choice, because also when any of these villains come on, because they get backed into a corner by like 30 people, they start getting usually. OK, this is my take on it. Most I think of the these, villain should come on and be apologetic. This is my well, this is what behavior. I was. Gonna, but this is what I was going to say. Yeah. The thing is with the villains is usually the reason that they are acting the way they do on the show is because they are really emotionally immature. I'm not making excuses for them. It's just usually it's because this person is this in this high intensity situation. They don't know how to manage their emotions. They have a lot to work through on their own. And then they act crazy or really mean or whatever. Doesn't excuse it, but that's usually the case. Mm -hmm. And that's what I observed on my own season is like, you've got like a, you're, you're, this is like a, a child, like coping mechanism mm-hmm. where you're really immature and you have like Bleh! but then what happens because that person is emotionally immature then they come on mental all then they have all these people they're feeling coming at them they feel defensive they feel back into a corner doesn't excuse it but they feel back into a corner and then they go like a scared dog where they just start like Bleh! saying things and um they don't usually say the right thing because they're just in fight or flight mode and then they end up looking more like an asshole and then everyone hates them even more and then they come off the show and then they receive even more feedback which they already got when the show was airing and then they just feel like a total piece of shit and then they yeah act Mm -hmm. like even more of an asshole online and it just becomes this like this cycle of this person who is has issues and it just becomes a thing so i feel like them not coming on it's like after that mental all i also feel like more people online are not going to go and like harass them after it because they don't even it's like you know what i'm no, saying because it's like they didn't even make more of an ass of themselves so i'm like i guess if you have to remove yourself from the situation to prevent yourself from being a dick yeah you know yeah. i just was like it. you guys let it go <laughs> it's like not only is this men tell all an absolute ad and just like garbage, but then we're taking it to a level that, in my opinion, is not appropriate. Not necessary. He should be held like, you know, I, I understand being accountable yeah, for yeah. your actions. But then that the signs, the costumes, the duck, it's like this is not OK, in my opinion. This is it's too much. Welcome to The Bachelor. Welcome to The Bachelor. <laughs> Welcome to The Bachelor. So, um... Uh, let's see. So those were those two. And then now what they I want to talk even about. Get Ty- they didn't give Tyler a hot seat, by the way. Yeah, that was weird. I didn't even notice Tyler throughout the whole episode. What the fuck? I saw Bachelor Data post something like there's there has like never been a situation. There. Yeah. There's like uh, I think she had said there had never been a situation. Sorry if I'm if I'm getting this wrong. But in a men tell all or women tell all where the most recent person who got kicked off didn't get a hot seat. Yeah, Crazy. Like Nate got a hot seat. Logan got a hot seat. Tyler was the most recent one kicked off and he didn't get a hot seat. Tyler had scruff on the in the Paradise preview, right? How much did he look like Jared? I thought he looked so much like Jared with his scruffiness well, Jared, when I would see the side and profile. And Jared, Jared was in the preview oh. for Bachelor. Maybe it was I was like, Jared. I think that was Jared. Jared. <laughs> Jared, I'm dead. Okay, that's so funny. I'm like, Jared and Ashley kiss and like they're there. Oh my there. God. Oh my God. That's <laughs> so funny. It happened so but briefly. Do, I thought that do. it was him and another girl. That's really funny. Um, okay, so yeah the champagne app free cruises okay let's talk about the nate thing let's talk about the nate thing (sighs) it's just like such a bachelor edit like the when they gave him both the moments to say his thing about chris and to say his thing about hayden it's everyone's like oh my god yes 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 i just get really annoyed when people when they do that as it is doesn't matter if i like the person or not (sighs) do you want me to go first or do you want to dive in i don't know i just i i went back and i looked over all the things that both the girls said too right that the stuff that was released on reality steve or whatever I don't know. I just don't even know. He just, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I'm like, 
he made this like subtle allusion towards the end where, you know, he's like in other relationships. And maybe I didn't make the boyfriend girlfriend label clear, but she was my girlfriend or whatever in this. I felt like that was obviously like sub, you know, sub tweeting um, the girl that came out. But I'm like, she has pictures of you like meeting her family and bringing flowers for her family and like vacations very romantic dates over the course of a year and a half, which only ended in the past year. Mm -hmm. I just, I have personally never been in a situation with a man like that, where we're sharing those kind of experiences together. And like, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't. I do not like the vibe. I do not like the vibe of the situation that came out. And I felt like it got really kind of just passed over. He said that he had a wall up for his daughter, which I totally understand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. However, the other girl knew about the other girl that he was seeing during the same time period knew about his daughter. Mm -hmm. And by the way, like having a wall up for your daughter doesn't mean you don't. I mean, I, I've, I haven't been in that experience. I will say that I haven't been in that experience. But um why are you, when you're having these more like what seemed like more intimate experiences with this person, like I said, meeting their family, going on vacation. Why are you not simply telling someone that you have a daughter and saying, like, I have really firm boundaries and, you know, I, I don't introduce her to, to girls that I'm dating, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I don't bring, bring people over because of that. Why are you just omitting that for that length of time? Yeah. I I was I had nuanced feelings about the whole situation sure. um because clearly we saw from the conversations and the photos with the women what had happened yeah. um and then but then when Nate came in or uh, sat in the hot seat and discussed like you said, I've never been in a situation where I've been through a hard divorce and then I'm trying to process how to date afterwards and feeling like maybe I want to like, you know, like he, he said he made a comment about the instability of his dating life post divorce sure. Sure. and not wanting to have your child involved. So I'm like, I don't think I can speak into that just because I've never been in that situation. And I know obviously a lot of people were like, you need to tell someone that you have a child. I would tend to agree after that amount of time that it's good to, you know, no, by no means needing to, to, uh, introduce them, introduce them, uh, by any means, but like at least These not, are, not sharing it. They're seemingly intimate experiences from what she, like yeah. the big one was like the family, him bringing flowers to meet her parents yeah. and things like that. Like to me, then even if you're, even if it's not the dishonesty about the child, to me, you're, you're not being, honest enough to set the boundary of like yeah I, I i'm not in a place with you right now to like meet your family and be introduced why would he bring flowers to go meet her family if he wasn't considering himself dating her yeah i don't i <laughs> you know what i'm saying so even if it's not the dishonesty about the child it seems like then there's a lack of communication in terms of what that relationship right. was and so for me i'm like okay that I was processing through that, never having been through that experience, but having my own personal thoughts yeah. about the matter. Um, but then for me, the big question was, then Jesse was like, well, what about the fact that you were simultaneously in a relationship with two different women? And then he said like, I'm, yeah, go ahead. So for me, I'm like, listen, we didn't get into details about any of that. It yeah. got brushed over very quickly. I'm like, all I can take away is that he said what he did was wrong and he apologized about it for me i look at that and i go again i always try to take it from the from the stance of if i had a friend sure i'd be like okay well now i know this and so if my friend is like hey i'm dating him i'd be like well just so you know like this is kind of the track record i do believe people can change a totally. thousand me too, percent me too me too and they learn and they grow and hopefully like He's learning and growing and like the communication is better. And but for me, I'm like, OK, he apologized. It's not my place to accept the apology. Those are that that apology is for the women. Right. Right. So now I walked away with it going like, OK, clearly they're trying to give him a bachelor edit. Yeah. Um, But then it's like, OK, we'll see then how that 
Well, he also said, forgive the man I was. And, and to me, that's not an apology to the women. That's an apology to the audience. Right. I'm right. sorry to all of you. Forgive the man I was. I'm like, OK, the man you were in the last year or yeah. in the last 12 months. That's the man you were. Yeah. Like and, and I agree, completely agree that people change. People make mistakes. But I'm also like, clearly this hadn't been dealt with addressed i'm assuming there i mean i really don't know it does not seem like there was an an apology to like the way i don't know to me it just felt like an apology to the audience and like mm -hmm. i don't know and i i just am like like you said it's i'm it, it was just recent and i and yes that's yeah that's where i go i looked at the situation and i go clearly you know, they're, they were showing how much all the men respected him in the house right. and how much Gabby cared about him. And I did appreciate that there was an apology uh, in the conversation. Sure. Um, it's, you know, again, that's between him and the women that yeah. he was dishonest with, right. right? But I'm like, okay, this is was pretty recent and it just seems like maybe there should be some time spent figuring out who you are and there's also a photo growing. of him holding hands with the girl now in the supermarket yeah, in the past week i, I don't I, I, that's my thing is i was like is this a bachelor edit because i don't this, know because at the same time there was a photo released of him where he's holding hands with a girl in a grocery store i'm like that doesn't seem like bachelor but he hasn't vibes. been but he hasn't been but again the he if he is vying for bachelor he would not no one who's going to be the bachelor is going to know right now yeah they really like at this point, they don't they usually like do not tell people until they're announced yeah. or until like a day the day before. So he wouldn't know. So and I don't have any problem with someone dating into the inter in the interim. But um, I just I don't know. It all gives me the vibe of like you've got some more self-discovery to yeah. do. I, and I and I that's where I land. I'm like, you know what? Like we were bringing up, yeah. we're like I think Avon would be a fantastic bachelor. Maybe someone like that is a better choice right now, as Nate is coming out of this somewhat recent divorce and these situations where he was dishonest with the women. There's love life messiness here yes. happening here. There's yeah. love life messiness, and I would not say, but you know what? That could be great TV. That could be great TV. <laughs> so TV. you know what? Maybe I should just accept it. But um, I don't know. I just, I just. Um, I don't think he's a bad guy. I am just not left with the flavor in my mouth of like, love Nate, like love him, want to see him as The Bachelor. I'm just, I feel like that's the energy I'm being fed. And that's not the flavor I have in my mouth. Mm -hmm. That's not what's the taste that's left in my mouth. I'm kind of like, eh. this felt like, I don't know. And again, with the comment later, we said I didn't make the boyfriend girlfriend label clear. I'm like, no, I fully hear you because I've heard I've heard my own male friends, guys that my friends have dated where I'm like, dude, you are not like being straight up. You are mm -hmm. trying to have your cake and eat it, too. Uh -oh, a thousand You're percent. trying to date around a thousand you percent. You don't want to tell this girl the honest truth about where you stand because you like hooking up with her and it's convenient for her and for you. And you feel validated by her attention and you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But that's not fair to her. And that's kind of the energy that I'm getting from the situation of like. Dude, you are not being fair mm -hmm. to her mm -hmm. or to either of the women oh, that you were involving yourself with. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. And yeah. Yeah. I just when I was watching it, I honestly because I know a lot of people were saying have are saying like, oh, they think that they're still going to make him the bachelor. Mm -hmm. um, when I was watching it, I genuinely wasn't even thinking about that. Mm. I wasn't even thinking like, oh, I think he's going to be the bachelor. I don't think they're going to make him the bachelor. Yeah. I, we'll see how the how the. I think after the next few episodes go down, I think yeah. there's going to be. I don't outcome. think that he's going to be the bachelor. So for me, when I was watching it, I was kind of just being like, OK, how is this going to go? And what I got from it was like, OK, clearly, like I said, I saw the receipts. I saw what happened. Yeah. What happened, in my opinion, was wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, he apologized. I think that there is probably growth that needs to happen. And exactly. It's exactly what I just felt I'm like. Am I going to call him like a liar or a cheater? Like, no. But I'm just like. Okay, guy, you got it. You got to be fair and mm -hmm. and kind and honest with the people that you're involving yourself with romantically. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of that's kind of honesty the, uh, and communication, thing. baby. With BIP though, how funny was it that they brought all four of them up and all we got from Genevieve was, yeah, <laughs> dude, 
Genevieve and Aaron. Oh. Remember. Forgot about that. During the women tell all with Clayton, ever like some of the, the women were throwing around the <laughs> oh, fact that Genevieve and Aaron were hooking that. up. And now we see them on Bachelor in Paradise and Aaron's back, baby. And by the way, when Bachelor in Paradise aired last time, we literally said Aaron will become the king of paradise yeah. and he is the guy who will He'd show up back on every seasons. BIP for like the next 10 years you until know, the show up. dies. Oh, he will 100%. always be there. Of course. I mean, of course. Um, also, yeah. Victoria Fuller was up there. I know. Which I am very excited to see Victoria Fuller on the beach. We didn't see a glimpse of her, though, in the preview. Yeah, I didn't notice that, actually. So not sure what that's about. If I would have been her, I would have been like, after the preview, I would have been like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> like, what? No cameo for me. You have me up here and no cameo. Andrew, I'm already annoyed by. I don't like him. I know you're not an Andrew fan. He's I'm going to see, so I'm gonna see where I land. Now, what I... He's a cloud chaser. What I am excited about is Brandon. Oh my God. That's what I was going to bring up. That's what I forgot to bring up. I'm really excited about Brandon too. I, oh. I really hope he's not there for like two days and then gets cut. Seeing his face on the screen lit my soul I love up Brandon. again. I love him so much. Yeah, I really and like him. And we see clips of him and it looks like he's kissing Serene, who I love. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure throughout Clayton's season that Brandon was posting on his IG stories about like how he was so into Serene. Ooh, yay. So I think he's like <sighs> there for her. I I'm hope. Like, is this the love story? Okay, I really are? hope because sometimes with these oh. great guys like Brandon, they come on for like two minutes on the show and then like no one gives them a rose and they go home. And I like really don't want that to happen with him. I really want to see him throughout the season. Like we said about Brandon, <sighs> we believe that Brandon is ready for love. I know. Remember, people really like didn't like him on the seat. Like some well, people, people were just like, he seems immature. he's too much. And he's I'm like, like, he's like a junior higher. I'm like, excuse and, and me. I, and I get the ick of the over romantic guys. I thought he was so genuine. And he's real. I we love him. Yeah. And I believe he is so ready for love. And yeah. I believe in my soul that Brandon will find love. I really hope so. I believe Brandon will find love on the beach. I see him become a dad in like, oh. in like 18 months. And which is he, what I feel like would and happen. And if he doesn't find love on the beach, then he better be our next Bachelor. I mean, that could happen. We could see how... He, I just... I hope oh. he just gets a decent amount of screen time on Paradise. He is what I really want. Just, he, I, I'm not joking. This sounds like such an over-exaggeration, but... When his face pops up on the screen, like my heart is filled with joy. He's such a sweetie. He's so such sweet. a sweetie. He's so just wears his heart on his sleeve. Is totally just a total sap, but so authentic about it. And I just like that. I just feel like he's him. I feel like he's so him comfortable being himself. I could see Brandon. He's the one that everyone's like. He's young. He has that young energy. No, no, no. Brandon's one of those ones that I'm like. I could see that man getting engaged on the beach, getting married, having kids, and being like a lasting yeah. bachelor success story. He's I could the see one, that He's the one him. we're always trying to set up with our friends, right? Yes. Of like, you've got to give Brandon he's a, a chance. He's a perfect guy. I you've got to give him a chance. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm man. So, I am so excited for Brandon. I think that's kind of all. Screen. Yeah, I mean, honest to God, other than that, it was just like... And then it was Rachel and Gabby addressing randoms, who I didn't even remember from the season, mostly. Yeah, and what the hell is with Tyler? Here. I really hope Tyler has some time on the beach, honestly, too, because he is k such a goof, but I think that he could be really fun. He's He is. He's just such a nice guy. <laughs> oh, my God. When he had his moment with Rachel and he was just like, just like you are, you just did everything with so <sighs> much grace. And honestly, when you broke up with me, like I respected it's what needed to happen. And I mean, he's just, I'm <laughs> he's like, he's earnest, you like, know, how, how can you be, how can you get mad at this guy? Um, but yeah, I mean, they, oh, here's a question for you. What? Jordan V. Do you think Jordan V will be on Paradise? Um, I feel like he can't not show up on Paradise. Yes. Everyone was so obsessed with him, even though he was only there for like one episode. Yeah, why does she, I still didn't get it clear. She kind of addressed why she sent I him home. I think she just didn't have chemistry with him. Which I thought they did. It was strange. I know. Um, yeah, I think he probably will be. 
I feel like he has to show up. Right. So many women were like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Do you think that um, do you think that Logan is going to get the villain edit? I don't think he's going to get a villain edit, but I, th- in I think there I, I don't think he's going to get a villain edit. But I think there's definitely going to be moment a moment where he's like, oh, no. Oh, I uh, didn't mean to do that. Whoopsies made out with three of you in the last 48 hours. And both all of you caught feelings. Oh, so, oh, Logan. That's I think might happen with that. Well, I mean, honestly, obviously there were the, the whole long ad situations, but please, that was not what we were here for with the men tell all. But um, yeah, preview for the finale. Next week, baby. <laughs> Fantasy for Suites th- part one. Woo woo! Preview. We see Gabby saying that Eric is, te- it seems like she's saying Eric is testing her and you don't do that to someone you love. Not sure what that's about. No idea what that we means. We have the Rachel Zach, the her saying to to Zach, "You told me things, and then you went back against your word and what you said." Don't know what that means. Wait, was it Zach? Was Zach one of the guys that said they weren't ready for marriage? No, no. Zach was like, "I'm all in." I Maybe he might he pulls say. Back I think he's he going to say that he's not ready for to be engaged yet. I think that's what's going to happen. I think you're right. I think you're right. It looks like Gabby is um distraught over the jason situation with jason not Not being being ready ready. um but then excuse me we see both gabby and rachel at the altar even though in the previous episode it made it look like jesse was saying to rachel like you're the only bachelorette left or whatever so i don't know what they were trying to do with that but we see gabby in her dress next to the little ring fucking pulpit getting ready to potentially get proposed to so it looks like together not they're not together. Okay, but it's either of their separate final rose moments. Yes. It seems what like. if it was filmed at a different time? Yeah. If maybe. Gabby leaves and then comes back or something, and Rachel's already gone. I don't know. No, no, no. I think he's literally just saying you're gonna go, have to go this part alone. Like I think they're they're just split up. They they won't get to oh, see each other. Oh, that's probably again. what it is. They make it seem like Gabby leaves. Yeah. And yet it's literally just like, all right, you guys aren't gonna get proposed to together. No, like they probably just don't get to talk to each other at Can the, the end of this imagine experience. Imagine if they made them get proposed to together, if they had them set up like right oh next my. to each other when both of the men and then one had to break up and then the other one was like, You're the one, and then they had to then do a swap. Wouldn't put it past him. I but really yeah, I think he's just saying that, you know, you're going to have to go this portion alone. Like you guys won't get to interact with each other through the rest sense. of the show. That makes sense. They got to keep those. Well, listen, separate. I have high hopes for this next episode. I'm very much looking forward yeah, I'm, to the, I can't wait. the first Fantasy Suites episode because this one was such a dud that I don't even like. No, I think I think I think Fantasy Suites is going to go great. I, I believe mean, that it's going to be I'm a good episode. I'm pretty interested in all the guys that are that are left. Me I'm too. I'm pretty invested in the outcome, so Me too. we'll see what happens, but I believe all right broads, we'll chat soon. Tune in for chat the soon. bros tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye.